In the previous video, I talked about what desolation is. In this episode of Deciding Like a Jesuit, I'm going to talk about what to do in desolation. If I eat terribly, never exercise, and neglect sleep, I'm not going to feel great. At the same time, someone else could eat kale, exercise religiously, get eight hours of sleep a night, wash her hands, get the flu shot, and she might still get sick. Something analogous can happen with desolation. One reason for experiencing desolation is our own inattentiveness to prayer and the spiritual life. If I notice the symptoms of desolation, I should ask myself, have I actually tried to spend time with God? Have I made time for silence? Or am I always running from one thing to the next? But inattentiveness to prayer is only one cause of desolation. Even the most committed Christians go through periods of desolation. Mother Teresa experienced decades of interior dryness, even though she dedicated her life to prayer and service to the poor. How do we make sense of this? It's not like God sends us desolation as if he wants to play with us. God is love. But God allows us to experience desolation. God does not promise a lifetime of sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. And honestly, thank God. Now, don't get me wrong, I love sunshine and lollipops as much as the next guy, but we can actually learn a lot about ourselves and about God through desolation. Lessons that we probably would not learn if we were in constant consolation. But we should also fight against desolation. We don't want to stay there. When facing desolation, we should listen to the wise words of Professor Dumbledore. Always use the proper name for things. Giving a name to a negative experience can be the first step in being liberated from it. Calling out the desolation removes a great deal of its power. As Dumbledore says, fear of a name increases fear of a thing itself. Naming it can help us fight against it and help us see its smallness compared to the love of our consoling God. Desolation is also not the time for making or changing decisions. We often can't see the forest for the trees while in desolation. If you remember nothing else from these videos, remember this. Never change a decision that was made during a time of consolation while you are currently experiencing desolation. Let me say that again. Never change a decision that was made during a time of consolation while you are currently experiencing desolation. I work with guys who are thinking about joining the Jesuits and becoming Catholic priests and brothers. This process of discernment lasts years. The application process takes months. It involves interviews and so many forms to fill out. No one rushes into this. But after being accepted to join us, some guys experience desolation in the final months before they enter. Some start to question whether they should actually become Jesuits. But desolation is not the time to make a change. There may be good reasons to reverse a previous decision, but a change should only take place when one is in consolation. We should also try not to go it alone when in a period of desolation. We are often tempted to keep things to ourselves during desolation, thinking, you know, it's not a big deal, or I really shouldn't bother my friend. Resist that temptation. Desolation is a time when we often don't feel like reaching out to others, but when we should lean on our support network more than ever. Talk to a mentor or a spiritual director. Participate in a faith community. Now, YouTube is great. I mean, you're listening to me right now. That's awesome. But YouTube is not a replacement for an embodied community. We need people to inspire us and call out our BS and show us that our way is not the only way. Initially, even though I often don't feel like praying while in desolation, I need it now more than ever. I might moderately increase my prayer and church participation. When I'm in desolation, I often lack creativity. Prayer feels dry. Desolation is often a time when I need to rely on the structured prayers of the church more than normal. Even if it doesn't feel as if a lot is going on when I pray the Our Father, for example, Jesus gave it to us, so I figure it's good enough. Doing good for others also doesn't come as easily during desolation, but we need it. We can make an extra effort to be kind and go out to other people as a way of fighting the desolation. 
we should remember that desolation rarely lasts long and that God can use this time. While in desolation, we can become less dependent on spiritual candy and we can grow in greater trust even when we're not feeling God's presence. Still, desolation is not the time for sitting on one's hands. It's time to get to work. Thanks again for watching this video in the Deciding Like a Jesuit series. In the next video, I'll be talking about what to do in consolation. Until then, if you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out to me at decisions at Jesuits.org. Thanks and God bless.